Finally, we've got wind of some news about the USAF sixth generation fighter jet. The most advanced aircraft the US Air Force ever made will cost up to three times a new F-35. While this initial announcement was exciting, it was also a cause for worry for some, because the more expensive the craft is, the less likely and practical it will be to mass produce. To put it in perspective, the cost of the F-35 hovers at around $100 million per unit, and the USAF 6th generation fighter was estimated to cost around $300 million per unit. Yeah, it's not cheap. 6th generation fighter jet is expected to come out in the 2030s with a set of unique traits and features that have never before been seen. It's expected to be optimized for range, payload, and stealth. It will basically be fighting as a part of a highly integrated deep penetrating team of systems. This will require it to have a set of features including a design that allows for stealth. Given the circumstances, a slick design featuring an elongated blended fuselage and wing configuration without the traditional horizontal and vertical stabilizers seems like the best way to go. It's also expected to be able to cover a lot more distance than previous fighter jets while holding its fuel internally. Beyond that, it's expected to have the ability to sustain flight at supersonic speeds without using an afterburner which burns more fuel and increases heat signature. It's important that the NGAD fighter is data-linked with assets over a broad area, including collaborative combat aircraft and other drones. Based on information shared with the public so far, it's expected that the NGAD plane would control between one and five of these CCAs. It was stated in 2020 that the 6th Gen fighter would likely have its own AI co-pilot. With the advancements made in AI in recent years, that doesn't seem like an impossibility anymore. Each of the drones acts as a multiplier in the air, giving the manned fighter the ability to see farther, shoot farther, and engage more targets without putting more than one pilot in danger. The CCAs will basically be powered by AI and come with tech like sensors, jammers, and missiles, increasing payload, which we will touch on later. The use of the CCAs is not only cost-effective, but also strategic, as they will go a long way to improve survivability and expand the area where the 6th Gen fighter can operate on its own, without needing beyond line-of-sight relays like satellites. When this is combined with a high-flying, stealthy data gateway system, its connectivity can reach even further without depending on space-based resources. When it comes to propulsion and power plant, there's a huge effort underway, with multiple contractors as part of what is called the Next Generation Adaptive Propulsion Program, or NGAP for short. The U.S. Air Force awarded five contracts worth nearly $1 billion each to various companies like Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman in August 2022 to work on NGAP. Additionally, both Pratt & Whitney and General Electric were also given contracts for this project. While the Air Force might have been thorough in its initial planning for the next-gen fighter, there are technologies available now that were not available then that they plan to incorporate. This includes onboard offensive and defensive lasers, new advances in stealth, and also new sensors for the fighter as a whole. As exciting as these described features might be, they are expensive and contribute to the hefty price tag associated with the mass production of these 6th generation fighter jets. While it sounds almost impossible, we do have some ideas on how they can make it cheap, but it does come with some compromise. Given how the 6th gen fighter is set up with the CCAs, it's been described as a family of systems. The main fighter, along with the CCAs, make up this family of systems. While this does sound expensive, it's actually considered cost-effective and can be used to reduce the cost of developing the 6th gen fighter jet by distributing its functions across the other CCAs flying alongside it. The 6th gen fighter could be the jet with a human in it to serve as a line of sight to control the CCAs and manage the tactical operations. Using this approach will mean that the 6th Gen fighter itself might not need its own radar and specialized sensors. The systems such as the Infrared Search and Track, or IRST, electronic support measures, and electronic warfare capabilities could be spread across modular CCAs or other nearby platforms. If it becomes necessary, some of these could even be handled by space-based platforms or constellations with the data linked to the aircraft in real time. 
This is risky, as it will limit the main 6th gen fighter and make it very dependent on the CCAs, but it will also significantly reduce cost. Beyond these, the CCAs could also be utilized as distributed payload platforms. This is something we've seen aircraft like the XQ-67 offboard sensing station adopt. We can even call it an early trial for such a system. Adopting that, however, will mean the 6th gen fighter will be less capable on its own in high combat scenarios. Such an approach will, however, be contrary to what the 6th gen fighter has always been thought to be. That is heavy interceptor-like aircraft featuring a comparatively very large combat radius with an ability to carry a large payload of diverse weaponry internally so that it can maintain its low observable or stealth abilities. A reduction in the payload requirements for the 6th gen fighter would simplify its design and reduce the size of the platform. This would significantly lower costs, as everything from propulsion needs to the airframe size would be scaled down. This doesn't necessarily mean that the fighter would be unarmed. It could still carry a smaller weapons loadout, such as four AIM-120 or AIM-260 missiles, along with two AIM-9X Sidewinders or four small diameter bombs, or SDB, for air-to-ground missions. This setup would be sufficient for contingencies and routine operations in less contested airspace, like the Middle East, where the CCAs might not play a major role in regular missions. Where heavy payloads are needed, the services of CCAs or platforms like the B-21 Raider could be utilized in deeper contested areas, while F-15 EXs and B-52s could perform a similar role along the outer edge of high-threat zones. So instead of a heavily expensive 6th gen fighter, a portion of those funds could be used to purchase additional B-21s or F-15 EXs to support air dominance missions tied to the NGAD program. Anyone who is familiar with Air Force operations knows how much of a big factor fuel is. If the 6th gen has anything like the features we mentioned earlier, then fuel would have been a heavy and expensive headache. It may have even needed a stealthy tanker that would operate at the edge of contested airspace. If that's the case, the USAF might have to build a stealth tanker, and the need for a much longer-ranged 6th generation crew tactical jet could be offset to some degree. The performance targets of the plane could also be revised. It could be made a little slower and made to fly at lower altitudes than intended. By easing up on extreme or cutting-edge performance requirements and avoiding the high costs associated with advanced materials and technologies, the NGAD airframe could be made simpler and more affordable. This will also mean scaling back the objectives of the next-generation adaptive propulsion program. A modified version of an existing engine or two would further reduce cost. Speaking of cutting down innovations, the laser weaponry, which was rumored to be a core component of the NGAD program, could be taken out. The weight, volume, complexity, power generation, and thermal management required to operate even a defensive laser system are substantial and expensive. If compromises are being made in areas such as the airframe, payload, and performance capabilities, this mismatch will become more evident, and the remaining technological hurdles could pose serious obstacles for the program. In simpler terms, if the other breakthrough advances rumored to come with this fighter are going out, then the laser must go as well. So where does removing the advanced payload, sensors, and electronic warfare gear leave us? For one, we have a lighter and smaller aircraft. But this leaves us with a mere shell of what we've always thought the 6th gen fighter would be. Sure, the plane will be cheaper to produce, but it loses a lot of its next gen capabilities without its family of systems. So while we've shown ways that the USAF could reduce the cost pertaining to the upcoming 6th gen fighter jets, we hope they really don't. If they want to remain at the top of their game and innovation, then sacrifices have to be made elsewhere. Kendall stated in 2023 that they wanted a minimum of 200 NGAD fighters, along with a thousand drone wingmen to accompany them into battle. That's a lot of money, and you can make it cheaper. How? By subscribing to our channel and giving this video a like. Check out our next video now on your screen, and see you there!